Well, you guys had to have your way, didn't you? You had to have me do a video on should you be grading a card and how to do it. This is part one of that episode. Let's get into it. All right, guys, I want to welcome you back to the channel. My name is Sean. You're in the Pokeball. Today is going to be a very special episode. This is one that you guys have been asking me for just a bunch, and I hear you. Today's episode is going to be part one of a two-part series where I'm going to be talking to you guys about which cards you should be grading and why and for what reasons. All right, guys, first and foremost, I wanna go through some credentials of mine, just so you know that I'm a reputable source for information. And if you've been following the channel, then you probably already know that. Yes! I've been grading cards with PSA, Pokemon specifically for the better part of a decade. I've been doing it since before it was even profitable. I probably graded over a thousand cards, which to some that might not be many, but to others that might be the most they'll ever do. So I've been doing this profitably for a very long time. I have a very specific system, which I'm gonna be going over with you guys on how, why, and for what reasons I will grade certain cards and where my thresholds are when it comes to loss, profitability, things like that. And we're gonna be going over all of those things here today, but I just wanted to give you guys a little background on myself so you feel a little bit more comfortable knowing that the information that you're receiving today is coming from a reputable source that has done this and is still doing this profitably profitably to this day. So number one, guys, I want to talk about the most important question that you should be asking yourself before you even get into PSA grading. And that is, why are you grading the card? So there's usually three reasons. And sometimes it's a combination of, the, of, of a few, but first and foremost is profit. Are you buying loose cards then to grade them, then, then to sell them for profit and do it all over again? Are you grading cards to complete a collection? Are you a completionist? Are you trying to collect a PSA 8 set, a complete PSA 9 set, or even go for a PSA 10, like a perfect gym mint set? A lot of people grade for those reasons. Or are you grading to commemorate certain cards? So what I mean by that is, are you do you wanna get cards graded because they are cards from your childhood and you don't care what grade they get? and you just wanna commemorate them, you wanna encapsulate them, and you wanna seal them because they are nostalgic to you and they are and they mean something to you and value is not an issue, pretty much. Now that we know that we're grading for profit or collecting, you need to ask yourself, what's your risk and or profit tolerance? So what do I mean by that? If the card doesn't grade as well as you thought it will, will you be losing money on that card if it grades, let's say a seven or an eight rather than a nine or a 10 where you thought? So that's very important. And there's certain steps that you can take to try to pretty much ensure that that won't happen or not on the grand scale of things. Anyway, you'll get a few cards here and there. PSA is just notorious for that. Well, you'll get a random PSA five or six, even if the card is, you know, pack fresh. And sometimes it's for a reason. Maybe there's a crease you didn't see, something like that. But for the most part, there are steps you can take that you can taper your risk and profit tolerance. Another thing you need to do guys before you get into this is do your homework on the lower graded prices. What do I mean by that? So we're gonna talk about specific scenarios and different types of cards that have higher and lower risk tolerances, but for the most part, you should be calculating that before you grade certain cards. Let's take a Vaporeon, for example, and we can go down to my desk cam. So this card specifically has a very high uh, reward compared to a very high risk factor. So what you need to know and what I do is do your homework. What happens if this card comes back in a PSA 7 or 8 compared to let's say a 9 or a 10 which is what I think it might get, right? What are those values? What is the disparity between PSA 9 and PSA 10? You need to know these things and you need to know whether or not you're willing to take that type of risk compared to how much it's gonna cost you to grade the card, which you need to factor in, and then how much it costs you for the card specifically and your time and effort really, because those need to be quantified on some level. If you're doing this for a profit and as a secondary job or your primary primary source of income, you need to know how long it's taking you to grade these cards, acquire them for how much, and then which service level and how much it's costing you to grade. All of these things need to be factored in on whether or not you should be grading the card or not. And that's something that I always look at on every single card. And once you've been doing this for a long time, you already kind of know where your tolerances are and which cards uh, are more fruitful to grade if you're looking to just turn around and sell them or if you're looking to hold and then sell them if they don't get that grade that, that you need for your completion set, right? So you really need to set yourself up for the best opportunity to succeed. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. As you can see, we have two very, very different cards here. We have an unlimited 
Hollow Vaporeon from Jungle, and we have a Kadabra Reverse Hollow from Legendary Collections. So these are two very different cards. They are both straight out of a pack, pulled by myself. These are absolutely what you would consider pack fresh, but we're gonna find out if they warrant being sent in to PSA for grading. So number one, I would work on a three point system if you're going strictly for PSA nines and PSA tens. So what do I mean by that? You should be limiting each card to having no more than three flaws. And the flaws can be one of the following. And these are things that you're looking for. Number one is centering. So not only centering top to bottom and left to right, but you might be looking at cards that within the box here, it might be pitched to one side or the other. So we're not only just looking at how fat the lines are left to right, top to bottom, we're looking at the pitch of the card also. The same thing goes for the back. And I'm gonna show you a way that you can actually check that. Another thing that we're looking at, guys, is we're looking at edge wear. So does the card have whitening? A lot of people know what edge wear is. Does the card have dots, factory nicks, things of that nature? These are things that we need to be looking out for. Another thing we wanna look at is the hollow in general. And don't worry guys, we're gonna be taking a closer look at this Vaporeon and this Kadabra, but I just wanted to go over the things that we need to be looking for before we even consider grading the card or not. The hollow. Does the hollow have scratches? Is the hollow clean? Is there hollow bleed? Does the hollow have print lines, which this one does, you can see it plain as day, but we'll get into that. Does it have print lines? These are all things that you need to consider. And guys, every time you see a flaw, I mark it down on a notepad and paper that I have literally right next to me. And if it has more than three, I really have to start doing that risk profit tolerance, which we'll talk about. And we'll look at these two different cards and how those in, and how those stack up. And then lastly, guys, which is a, one area that a lot of people that grade cards, they forget or they actually neglect, and that is the surface condition. So not only are we looking at all these things, but we have to look in the middle too. Sometimes if these cards have been in binders for a long time, or if they've been in the same plastic sleeve for a long time, sometimes the plastic can come off onto the card itself. And you can sometimes clean that, but a lot of times you have surface damage that you don't see that will be picked up by a magnifying glass and that's another thing that we'll look at and some and we need to not only do we need to know our cards we need to know the people that are grading our cards and how they're looking at it and what they're looking at and what they're looking for okay so let's look at these two cards and let's talk about a few of those points uh first and foremost so one thing i do guys always and if you're really serious about grading with psa you need to get yourself a centering tool this specific centering tool is by passive paradise they're not paying me to say this but this is one of the tools that i use when it comes to centering and what i'm looking for and what i'm looking at and i'm going to keep it real simple because they do have a point system but i will tell you this pro tip insider info there was a time when i had a rep at psa he no longer works there but i used to be able to call him direct he told me that most PSA graders have a 60-40 tolerance. So they give you within a 60 to 40% centering tolerance where they're not gonna ding you. So what I do, and I'm gonna just tell you what I do, which has worked really well for me and has helped me be very profitable over the years when it comes to grading, is I go ahead and I center up my card. And if you're having issues with that, if the card's in a sleeve, you can tape it if you'd like. That way it's easier for you, but I just, I just hold it up there. So let me see if I can get this right. You need to match up these dots right here. You can see the cornering tools and you can, this is something that you can play with. I'll, I'll put the link in the description. These, the centering tool and magnifying glass cost 12 bucks. It's, it costs nothing. So here we go. So I have my card centered up here. Let me see if I can get this in nice and close. So what we're looking at is how much of this border is spilling over. And I, and I'll, and I will try to magnify if I can with my editing tool. You can see here, guys, there's different lines here. This second black line, how much of that border is spilling over into the second line? As you can see on this side, it's almost perfect, right? We can see that it's almost matching, you know, matching up perfectly there. This is something that you need to use to see how much of your border is spilling over into that, into the extra, you know, area when it comes to centering. And then same thing with top and bottom. And then you can also match up the pitch. So if you have more, more spilling over up top compared to down low, then you know that the card is, might be pitched left or right. This is another thing that you can do on the back. And this is not even taking into consideration the surface condition and or you know edge wear, stuff like that. 
you need to match up your you need to match up your centering in the back. It's kind of hard for me to do with my camera specifically just because it wants to it wants to focus on everything else. But this is a an invaluable tool that you guys need to get your hands on uh, when it comes to checking the centering. And that's the centering that that it's just simply a centering template or a center centering tool. Uh, I've been using this for a good while. I had another one, but it got worn out. But that is so important when it comes to looking at the centering in the card. So I've already done the centering. This falls well within the 60-40 threshold. The centering on the front of this card is nearly perfect. And the back is a little bit uh, right to left, but it's still within that 60-40. So there's different merits of this card on why or why I would not get it graded. So let's let's talk about our next thing, and that's the edge wear, right? So if we just slide this card out, we don't need to look very far. This will show you. Let me see if I can do this on the camera. It's going to be kind of difficult. As you can see, this top right corner is pretty clean, right? You see a little nick there. If we go over here, we see that we have a very distinct nick. So that would actually, for me, that's that's strike one and that's strike two, okay? So that's, that's strike one, strike two. And then we look down here, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Okay, so we have two strikes. If we're on the three-point system, we have two strikes. Now let's look at the front. Let's look at the hollow. Let me see if I can pull this up a little bit so we can see it without the sleeve there. If you can see that right there, guys, that is gonna stick out plain as day to a grader. That's strike three for me on this specific card. And speaking of risk and tolerance, and then we don't even need to check the surface because I already know just with those three dings, I know that this is gonna be taken out of the PSA 10 category when it comes to PSA. I, if it came back at 10, I would be astonished and I would almost be a little bit irritated because they would be so inconsistent as to give this a 10. This card specifically, I, I chose it because it has such a high reward compared to the risk. In a PSA 10, this card last sold for $4,000. That's huge. The card loose in mint condition, 15 to 20 bucks, right? So huge risk. The reason why it sells for so much in a PSA 10 is because it usually has one of these three defects, right? It usually has a chip. It almost always has a print line and the centering, it's got to be perfect. So this card I need to calculate if it's going to be worth it to send it into PSA at a $30 level and the co the cost of the card, let's say it cost me 20 bucks. So I'm at 50 bucks. And then if this card comes back a PSA eight or seven, which it might, I might be losing money at that point or breaking even. And with that, it's not even worth my time. So this is something guys that you really, really want to consider when you're thinking about sending cards in is this card better be damn near perfect if I'm going to send it into PSA looking for that 10. And you know what? I've struck gold many times where I've hit that card and it comes back a PSA 10 and it was a huge score and I ended up, you know, I'll keep it in my collection, but it's a huge score, and you, but you have to take that risk. No, you know, no, no risk, no reward, right? So these are things you need to do to set yourself up for the best possible outcome. This card I chose specifically because it is pack fresh, but as far as I'm concerned personally, it does not merit get, getting graded with PSA, uh, especially not at the cost levels that they are at right now for grading cards, which, we'll, which we're gonna go over in part two of this series. Let's real quickly look at this Kadabra in a reverse uh, in a reverse hollow pattern out of Legendary Collection. So these reverses are very sought after, especially in mint condition. So this card, guys, it, we're not going to go as deep into it as a Vaporeum because I didn't have to, uh, just because I wanted to show you guys um, a card that I would send in compared to one that I wouldn't. This specific card is more off-centered than the Vaporeon, but other than that, it is very nice. It has one little chip on the top right, and then the rest of the card looks really, really good. We don't have to go over it because I already did that for us. But after checking my centering, I know that I am left to right a little bit, right? You can see that it's a little bit fatter on the right than it is on the left, but that's okay because I've done my homework on this card. This Kadabra sells even in a PSA 8 or 9 for well over $100. PSA 9 sell for almost $200. A PSA 10 now, of course, sells for maybe six or seven hundred dollars uh depending on which recent sale you're looking at my margin of error on this card can be much greater because it is such a sought after card and people want this card so much more in the lower grades than they do this vaporeon just because there's not as many of the cadaver as there are the vaporeon so this is something that you have, have to consider guys and that's why i chose these two cards specifically it is so so important that you do your homework, especially 
with cards like this and of this caliber. If you're not doing your homework, you're not giving yourself the best opportunity to succeed. That's going to be it for me, guys. I hope this was helpful. Stay tuned for part two of this episode. And yeah, let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are. And if you have any questions, I try to answer as many questions as I can with the time that I have. That's going to be it for me, guys. I'll see you on the next live or the next episode. Peace out. Yo, what's up, guys? If you want to see a video that I think that you might like after watching what you just watched, click the button right here. And if you want to be one of those people that want to subscribe to the channel and see how far this rabbit hole goes, the button's right here. Do it!